Mmm, that's a lot of nostalgia. Hey guys, this is my review for Ready Player One, the film based off the popular book, which takes a lot of 80s pop culture, as well as current day pop culture, puts it into a movie about living in this virtual reality world and fighting against the oppressors and people who want to control it and take away the fun of the game. I just started reading the book, so I know it's very full paw that I didn't finish it before I saw the movie, but I got invited, so I went and saw it. And admittedly, the film takes away like the first part of the book because I'm still in the school part and that part's been boring whereas the movie literally jumps you right into the world introduces Wade Watts as Percival and then we're in the first race which admittedly is probably one of the best parts of the movie this chase scene this race with all these different cars the old 1966 Batmobile the DeLorean the bike from Akira. It's got King Kong in there, or freaking T-Rex. All of this is just blasted at you. All of this memorabilia, all this nostalgia, all of these pop culture references are thrown at you so quickly, but it's so incredibly well shot. I will admit, I was kind of interested to see how Steven Spielberg was going to direct this. I still have not seen The Adventures of Tintin, which apparently was pretty decent considering Spielberg didn't have that much experience in that field of making a computer generated movie. Whereas Ready Player One, it's two halves. There is the real world and then there is the Oasis world. And I'll admit the Oasis world, I was entertained the entire time. The visuals are fantastic. The pop culture references are there, but they're not, they're not the main focus of the movie. They are there to help, you know, kind of establish who Halliday, the creator of the Oasis was, just the things that he liked, the things he enjoyed, as well as current day pop culture references, but they're not the main key of the story. They're there, but they're not focused on. They're not important to the narrative, which is the main focus, which they keep with, which is great. And what's interesting too is Sorrento, the main villain of the film, basically represents all gaming companies right now, all major video game publishers, 2K, uh, EA with the idea of wanting to monetize everything in the Oasis. At one point they show a screen where they said that once they win they would be able to <laughs> put advertisements over 80% of the screen without causing seizures. And it's funny at first, but then also at the same time it's what's currently happening. As for the film itself though, it is a great time. It is a fun movie. The characters are really well developed. Eh, not so much as in the real world, but the thing is you have to realize that most of them are playing the two characters and that was a little bit kind of a different experience for me. Kind of, I haven't had that experience since Avatar where we're spending so much time with one character but he's two different people, right? But I still enjoyed the film. I thought the characters were really well done. Admittedly, it was a bit predictable and some parts were a little silly and mainly just the flow of the story. After we get the whole idea of what Halliday's Easter egg hunt is, it follows an extremely rudimentary story. As sure there are a few interesting elements into the character of Halliday who is constantly being developed throughout the film. However, just how it comes to the end, it was so Spielberg. In terms of just a really happy sort of go lucky thing. Not that I'm saying that it shouldn't have, I still feel that it works within the film's narrative, but it's just a little bit on the cheese side. I still enjoy the movie, I don't know if I would really want to watch it over and over and over again like some people were thinking. I admit I would like to see it again to try and notice the pop culture references that were there, but I feel that the length of the film may get to me. This film is over two hours long, and I didn't feel it too much because again, I'm looking at everything, I'm watching all the references and everything. However, I feel with just the references alone, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much a second time. I still feel that Ready Player One is a great adaptation. I think it is a great movie, and I'm very interested to keep continuing with the book. It's not the super standout movie of the year, but that's not kind of what I was expecting it to be. I just was expecting it to be a really good time with great music, cool references, and a really cool concept of a world where gamers can be gamers. And in the end, I enjoyed Ready Player One. It's not a standout movie for me, but 
That's just my opinion. Some of you guys may really enjoy it for all these references. But in the end, I'm going to give Ready Player One a 5 out of 7. I enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend going to see it. But for me, I'm probably going to just stick with the book and see how that works out. Maybe I might re-watch it again after I've read it just to see if, I, if there's anything that's different. I know there is some stuff that is a little different and some of it's really different from the book. But again, Ernest Cline, who wrote the book, also works on the screenplay. So. There is that added element to it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time.